Okay, let's do a couple of tips and tricks. All right, some guys are asking how do we do some things, and let me just point them out. So I'm doing a new project. I can call it whatever I want, and then there we go. And so let's say I want to import, let me find a page I want. Okay, let's say I want to import that page. I'm just taking it from a list here that I have. So import the web page. This is the full web page. That's the one I want. Of course, do not use HTTP colon slash slash www dot. It's already assumed. And don't have a slash at the very, very end either. That's already assumed. We tried to auto program in everything that would automatically happen so that it's the minimum amount of stuff that you have to deal with, just the unknown stuff. So there you go. That's the page I want. And if the page was something like index.html or whatever, it's, that's perfectly fine. But just taking the page you want. And that's what it's called. So this is what I'm going to import. <laughs> and so there you go. It's kind of a bigger page. And now, this is what's new with the 17.1. It steps right into the universal fixes because, of course, there are probably going to be some relative URLs on the page that need to be resolved to the full URLs. So it's asking what's going to be the base where all the main stuff is, the main information for resolving all these. Well, it's not going to come off of the page. It's going to probably come right off the main domain. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to assume it's coming off of there and check my page out. Boom. And so it gets done fixing everything and then it saves the page. See how quick that happened? That was one step. Let's see how it looks. And by the way, when you're asked whether to allow blocked content, it's better to say no, because otherwise the page may take five minutes to load <laughs> because it has to pull in things like Google AdSense and so forth. So the first thing you would notice is this is not working. <clears throat> it's not working because I did not allow the blocked content. It's just a way of protecting your computer. It's a security thing. Don't worry about it because when you upload the page online and then check it out, this will probably fill in just fine. You know, if it worked before on that website, it will certainly work afterwards on that website. The next thing I want to point out is all these little question marks. You can see them. There's one here. There's one here. We kind of know what they are. They're oddball symbols that are not understood on the page. And the question is, is there a quick and easy way to deal with those? And the answer is yes. Let me show you. Whenever you hit Save as HTML, it saves it in an encoding form called ANSI, A-N-S-I. Okay, that's just a standard. And so it saves it that way. A lot of web pages are in ANSI format, but a lot are not. They're in UTF-8 format or they're in ISO format, uh, which is like a version of UTF-8. Almost always if we resave the encoding as UTF-8, then everything else works. Okay, and all those question marks take care of themselves. So anyway, no matter how I deal with it down here, doesn't matter at all. It's just whenever this thing saves, uh, when you hit import web page, like I said, it does that. Then we go right into universal fixes automatically. Then it does hit this button at the end. And so it's in ANSI format. Now, if I right click and edit to open it in notepad, that's how it works for me. You may need to hit open with notepad. You might even have to go so far as choose the default program and they're just simply open with notepad and say don't always open it with notepad or it will forever open HTML files with notepad until you change it to Firefox or something else, right? That's the idea. But whatever the case is, if I hit edit, it opens it in notepad for me. Okay, so now when I look closely in the top couple of lines, I'm probably going to see this. Okay, there's this whole character set equals UTF-8. If it was ANSI, it would look like ANSI, like this. Or it would be in lowercase, A-N-S-I. But it's not. It's UTF-8. And it does not matter if it's lowercase, but that's the character set that it's saying it works in. That's a language, in essence, right? And it doesn't affect everything, but it affects some things. So anyway, if I, if I hit File save, it just saves my changes. But if I hit file save as, I can save it and probably in the same place with the same name. But I will change the encoding from ANSI to UTF-8 because that's what the page is expecting anyway. And if it is not ANSI, probably save it as UTF-8. That's like 99% of what it would be if it's not ANSI. 
no matter what it says. But there you go. And you can always change these encodings at will. I could change it back just as easily. Edit, File, Save As, and I could change it back to ANSI. It really doesn't matter at all. But I'm going to go with UTF-8. That was the idea. That's what it thinks the page is. So if I open it now, and don't allow the block content again, I'll save that for when I put it online, all my question marks are gone. So all those little character issues took care of themselves. And again, this will probably display just fine when I upload it onto a domain, well, a server. And then I view the page there on the server the way it's meant to be viewed. Then that'll probably fill in. Okay. So let me just show you by way of example. Let me just show you another one. <clears throat> okay. And again, you'll get to see how fast all this stuff is. So here I do a new project open it and actually let me just do the same one again just to be quick I think that's right yep it goes and then after it's done fixed to what is supposed to be here the base it fixes all of that and it saves it and so now I can check it and if I see those silly um, don't block if I see those silly uh, question marks which I will there they are then I can just Edit, File, Save as UTF-8, and 99% of the time, that'll fix it, and it'll look right, act right, and Google will be able to read it better too. Okay, Google bots, and every other search engine bot, because it's in the right language. It's in the language it says it's in. All right, now with that, let me show you one other thing, since that was pretty quick. Okay, and so just remember that always when you import a web page, it's going to step right into universal fixes. So you do not need to run that separately anymore. You do it all in one big step. So let me show you another one. And this is an interesting one, meetingburner.com. There we go. So let me do a new sheet. And we're going to import a main page called meetingburner.com. Okay, meetingburner.com. And when we import it, it says enter the domain name for the universal fixes, and we assume meetingburner.com. We say OK. It saved it. And so we go to open it, and it looks like garbage. Obviously, this is not the right path to the images folder in the CSS folder. It's not coming off the main part of the web page. We say, well, what if we edit it and check out the encoding? And we're going to find it up in here somewhere, but it's going to say, there it is, UTF-8. Okay. And so what if I save it as UTF-8? Save as UTF-8. Save. Replace, because it is a different document now, even though it, it seems like it would be the same one. The encoding's different. Okay, we still have our problem with our images and our CSS. So that is not the right path to follow. So the question is, what is the right path? Well, if we actually go to meetingburner.com and take a look at their source code, and you could do it off of what we took down, but it's just easier to do it like this, I think. I mean, it's up to you. But we can do an edit, find, or view source, I mean. Okay, and we can do, we can look for something called base. It'll, it'll be base href equals. Uh, fine, let me just try it this way. It, it is an open tag command, so I'll just search for it that way. And there we have it. Take a look. This is the base. They have it right here, except that they have it with the HTTP colon slash slash www dot the way they need to have it. And they have it with an ending slash. And they need to have it that way because the rest of their uh, information does not start with one of those slashes. Okay. If, if it did, then they'd have doubled up slashes. Okay, so they have to have it in one place, but not the other. Watch this. I'm going to copy this part. That's where all the stuff is. That's where the base href is, where everything else is, all the images, CSS, and all that stuff. So I'm just going to paste that on my little notes page here, and I got it. And so what I have here is this. And that's it, without any HTTP colon slash slash www dot and no ending slash because I don't need it for our universal fixes. It'll fix everything properly just with this information, which is what it's expecting. So let's try that again. It 
So let me do it again. And deleting the old and doing the new one again. Here we go. Ready? And we're going to say here, this is the main page that we want because it is the page that we want. Boom. And instead of what we had, we're going to use the right one. Control C. This is what they expect. So that's what we put. And it saves the HTML that way. Now when we look at it, again, don't allow black content. But here you go. Okay, and if I did allow black content, the video could play. It's just a question of how long it takes for the page to load. Let me try it again just to see. Okay, allow black content. There we go. Now it appeared. All right. So again, if you allow it, it'll appear. And then if I did see strange question marks, and I really should do this anyway. If I saw strange question marks, I'd change it to UTF-8. And even whether I do see strange question marks or not, this thinks it's UTF-8, so I really should save it as a file, UTF-8, so it all matches up for Google. It just looks like better coding, okay? And that's okay, because the Moji Pro deals with it just as equally well, whether it's an ANSI or UTF-8. It does what it's supposed to do equally well, okay? So there you go. There's that tip, all right? And also the tip for finding what you need for the relative path to all the images and stuff by looking at the source code of the original page for the base href tag to see if that is something other than just the main domain, which in this case it was. Usually it's just going to be right off the main domain that the images folder exists, the CSS folder exists, any other such things that we correct for. Okay, and so these are just little tests and that's the example of how that works. Okay.